Hey everyone, welcome to the booth at Createx Colors and uh, today we are going to talk about a candy red repair. <laughs> uh, something I was really reluctant to do um, with this particular car, but I'm going to show you guys exactly what I did in terms of matching this color, this particular finish, which is not our candy. This is not our candy 2.0 system. It's not our base coat. It's, uh, this is a previous paint job. So that's what I'm going to talk about in terms of, we've done a lot of videos on uh, ground coats and achieving different finishes with different ground coats and, and candies. We've done a lot of, spent a lot of time talking about candies and this is actually something that's really going to kind of, I think, tie that all together to make you guys see exactly what you can do and what can be achieved with uh, blending and, and tinting in terms of color matching on something that, again, is like this, a candy, which I, again, I was reluctant to, to want to get involved with this because it is, I knew it was going to be difficult, but um, I'm going to kind of give you some insight on what it was and what, how we came about uh, this, this color match. So, real quick, this is the color that we ended up with. Um, it ended up being a, a mix. I don't know if you guys can see that here uh, with a panel gap. That's, it's this extremely close, almost a, a dead nuts match. And it was not easy to get here. It took a little bit of playing around in terms of letdown panels. We're always talking about doing a test panel and I have plenty of test panels. And even though they all look very similar, they are all extremely different. Uh, so what it ended up being was, ground coat was our 6013 silver sealer. Uh, so this is a silver underneath this candy. Um, and what it happened was the blood red that we have if I started over applying it to get to this richness, what would happen is this was getting darker. So it has to not only has to look good in the sun, but it also has to look good under natural ambient light as well. You can't have something that only matches in the sun and that's something that you're going to deal with, especially when with candies. So I ended up tinting, it needed a little bit more blue. So I ended up tinting the candy 2.0 with our sunset magenta. And I started and I did the same thing with my letdown panels. I did a couple spray outs and I did four coats, five coats, six coats, add a 10% addition of candy magenta. And then we looked at those and checked those out and under different light conditions and, and saw what we thought was gonna be optimum. And, and then I cut it down, so I went 5%. And what we ended up deciding on was this particular one, and this is a 5% add of sunset magenta to our blood red to give it a little more blue shade, a little more blue shade red, which is what we have in this car. And it actually is gonna be pretty much achievable in about three to four coats. So that's the other thing. We're trying to keep the amount of application of paint to a minimum. You know, that's the last thing you want to do is start building up a lot of material here. So uh, we're going to get up off the floor here, move over to the bench, and I'm going to show you guys exactly what I did to get this color. All right, everyone, we are at the bench, and uh, we're going to do exactly what it is that I talked about. So I already have my 4050 in my cup, and, and you guys know when we're spraying our candy, that is our essential carrier. That's basically our vehicle for the candy. So. Uh, I'm going to mix my blood red six to one. So it's six parts 40-50 to one part blood red. So it's going to be easy. Uh, I talked about percentages, right? I said I added 5% of the sunset magenta. So rather than trying to do these two before I add my 40-50, you're going to have such a small amount. And again, it depends on how much you're mixing that I'm going to do my ratio, my six to one first. So I already have my 40-50. I'm right at almost 10 ounces. 10 is a nice solid number. So to do uh, 10 percent of 10 ounces would be one ounce. So if you cut that in half, you have a half an ounce if you did less. So what I'm going to do is, that's my, that's my part. So it's basically a half an ounce to 10 ounces of my blood red mixture. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my one part of my candy blood red at six to one. So that's basically my whole mixture right there, right? So that's right where I want to be. And now I'm going to actually just measure off and go a half an ounce right there of my sunset magenta. So I have 10 ounces of color with my half an ounce of a, my tint essentially. So now I'm going to mix this up really well. Again, we always recommend uh, another thing you're going to want to do too, as I talk about it, if you haven't seen it in the other videos, is straining the candies. This is something you want to do. I use a 125 micron strainer for this. So really it's key. I don't know if you can see in the front of this cup, you probably can see a little bit of that 4050. It's going to look a little milky. You really want to make sure this is all completely 100% mixed really well. Mix it for at least two minutes. Let it sit for about 10 minutes. Get everything acclimated and make sure everything's mixed really well. And then I'm going to strain it and put it into my gun. Thank you. 
All right, welcome back. Got the table moved out of the way. I got my paint and my gun. Uh, again, real quick, I just want to touch, even though I am using the PPS, uh, the 2.0 system with the built-in strainers, these are the solvent ones. These are about 200 microns. And anytime you guys are mixing candy, uh, really, I want to stress that. Make sure you throw the candy through a, a 125 micron strainer, a really fine strainer. Um, it's just little, sometimes particles that get clogged up in the cap or the tip or the top of that bottle. You want to make sure you strain them. It's just going to help you in the long run. The last thing you want is like a little spot of something that's going to look like a black speck in your candy because that's not going to go away. So three to four coats is what is going to get me the color of where I need it to be on that car. So we're just going to show you real quick. It's a little overkill with this gun, but this is the gun that I'm using to spray the car. So it's my Supernova with a 1-2. It's a Supernova Evo. So I'm um, just about wide open. Two turns in on my fan, close it up just a little bit, and uh, 29 PSI, so like right at factory's recommended pressure. So this is coat number one. 75% overlap, that's exactly what you want. You want one nice, even coat for the first coat. So let that dry, and we'll do coat number two. All right, so that's coat number one. That is totally dry. And again, I, I want to stress on this has to be totally dry to the touch between coats. This is not a product that you want to put wet on wet. So it's been about 10 minutes, good airflow in here. Uh, this is dry, and that's the way you want it. You don't want to go wet on wet or even just a little bit wet. The, the longer you can let this dehydrate out a little bit, the better off you're going to be. So this is coat number two. All right, coat number two is totally dry, and I'm gonna do coat number three, and then what I'm gonna do is actually check that up against the car. That's one of the things we're talking about in doing a test panel, making sure that everything is exactly how you want it. So I think actually coat number three, I know I said three to four, but I think coat number three is gonna be the ticket to get the color where we want it. So we're gonna finish this up, and we'll see you guys next time, and be sure to keep an eye out for the video on actually doing this car when we spray those panels, and be spraying two quarter panels, a hood, and a trunk. So stay tuned for that, and we'll see you guys next time. All right, guys, real quickly before we break away, this is exactly what I was talking about. You can see this color is pretty much nailed, and it's nice that this shape has got that curve to it to emulate what this quarter panel shape is going to do, and this is exactly what we're talking about. I think if I went one more coat, it would have pushed this a little too dark, a little too rich on that, that blue-red side. So again, this is important, doing a test panel like this, using this equipment that you're going to use to spray. So uh, that wraps this one up. We're going to get this thing ready to spray, and we'll see you guys in the next video.